Moving on. The diagram below represents a DNA profile of three children, Hela, Priya and Leo, and their parents, mother and father. Only two of those three children are the biological children of the mother and father and one is adopted. Identify the two biological children. Now remember when we're looking at the issue of paternity, we are going to see that 50% of the DNA is going to come from the mother and 50% is going to come from the father. When we're looking at straightforward identification, for example, identification of a body, we expect to see a 100% match. But with paternity, we're only looking for a 50% match. So we go to the mother and we see that Hila has that stretch of DNA that matches the mother. But we can't make our decision based on one piece of evidence only. Priya and Leo don't have that match. We see that Hela also has a match to her father with a second stretch of DNA. We see that Hela then, with this third part, matches her father. And we see with the last part of this little profile, she matches her mother. So we see that on two parts of her DNA, she is matching her father, and on two parts of her DNA, she's matching her mother. We come to Priya, and we see that on this first stretch of DNA, there does not seem to be a match, either in the mother or the father. So we might say Priya is adopted, but we're not going to go there on one match. We're going to make this much more reliable. We see here that Priya does have something in common with the father, but then we've got two stretches that are unlike the mother and unlike the father. So Priya only matches her father in one aspect. So this is possibly the adopted child. We see Leo matches the father. Leo over here matches the mother. Over here, Leo is matching the father. And over here, Leo is also matching the father. So in this case, we've actually got 75%, 25% match. But remember, we're looking at a very, very short section of DNA. DNA profiles are uh, produced and matched up over hundreds and hundreds of sections of DNA. So from our discovery of matching, we see that Priya doesn't match the two parents. So we would identify the two biological children as being Hela and Leo. Explain your answer. We've already worked it out. We've talked about percentage matches, and this, of course, is a zero, zero percent match, and that explains why we are confident in saying that Priya is adopted. Now, in this uh, use of DNA, we are learning about, or we are establishing paternity. And there are other uses of DNA profiling. You're asked to state three other uses. So please do not mention paternity in your list of three other uses. Describe three completely different uses. So possibly around identifying a body of a person 
maybe the body has become, uh, it, it, it was thrown into a river or it fell into a river or under rubble from an earthquake and there are no physical identifying marks. So we do the DNA sample against DNA that we know came from a person that was lost in the earthquake or was lost at sea and if the DNA from the body matches the original DNA then we've identified the body. So we could identify bodies in the field of criminal forensics we are able to possibly eliminate suspects if we have a blood sample collected at a crime scene and we have the uh, victim's blood group and we have three other blood groups of suspects that we think could be could have been guilty for this crime when we match one of the suspects to the sample we are eliminating the other suspects so it's used in criminal forensics another interesting use of dna profiling is we want to establish for example whether uh, a particular species is the same as so species one is it the same as species two genetically we can do a profile of species one we can do a profile of species two and we can see are they the same if they're the same then species one is the same as species two if they differ then we have got two distinct species.